Morning folks and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be weighing up the pros and cons of hammock camping versus ground dwelling. There seems to be a bit of a divide within the bushcraft community uh, between those who like to hammock camp and those who like to camp on the ground. So I thought we'd have a look at the gear you need for both and uh, try and weigh them up against one another. Right, let's start with hammock camping. The first thing you're going to need is a hammock. Um, this is a DD Frontline, this is what I use. Um, there are smaller hammocks available, um, but this bag here contains everything. It's, it's got, I've got my hammock in here, I've got all of my suspension, I've got a pair of snake skins, which are sort of long nylon tubes, if you like, which um, protect the, the hammock while you're putting it up. Um, so you're going to need something to sleep in your hammock. You're also going to need something to keep the weather off. So you're going to need a tarp. Uh, this is a three meters by three meters tarp. Um, although you could, you could get away with a smaller one. This is just what I like to use because it, it offers me um, a nice big area um, under which you know, I can not only sleep, but um, you know, it's, it's an area where I can work as well. Um, so you'll need a tarp. Now, unless you're camping in warm temperatures, um, you're going to need some sort of insulation. Um, and you could use a sleeping bag for that, that would be fine. That will insulate the top half of you. Um, it's not going to keep you warm from underneath though, because as you lie in your sleeping bag, uh, the sleeping bag will be compressed against your hammock and um, the insulation doesn't work when it's compressed. It needs to be lofty, needs to, there needs to be air in there in order for it to work. Um, so you'd, you'd end up with cold spots if you just slept in a sleeping bag. Um, you, you'll feel the cold from underneath you. So you're going to need some sort of insulation from underneath as well. Some people like to use a roll mat or a sleeping pad. Uh, and that would be perfectly all right. This is a this is a thermo rest, um, and um, and this if you slide this underneath you in the hammock, um, that will offer you some insulation from underneath. Um, a lot of hammocks come with a, a double layer as well, so there's a, a dedicated space to slide a sleeping pad into. Um, but what I find, and what a lot of other people find, is that it'll insulate you underneath, but you'll end up with cold spots around where your shoulders are, um, because as it as it wraps around you. Um, it's, it's just not wide enough to cover your whole body. On the ground, it's just lying flat on the ground. As you're sleeping on the pad, there's only a small area of you in contact with the pad, keeping you off the ground, if you see what I mean. In a hammock, that's gonna form around you to the shape of the hammock, and therefore you're gonna have, there's gonna be more of your back, shoulders, body uh, in contact with the outside of the hammock. Um, and I found that they're just not quite wide enough. It's all right, you know, it's better than not having anything, um, but there is a better solution. Now what I like to use, and a lot of other people who hammock camp use, um, is an under blanket. Um, and as its name suggests, it is literally just a blanket, it's insulated like a sleeping bag is, um, and it hangs underneath your hammock, underneath you. Therefore trapping air um, in that space underneath you. It's not compressed because it's on the outside of the hammock, um, and that A keeps the wind off, and B traps that air. Your body warmth will then warm that air up, and that's what will keep you, keep you warm. So an under blanket is a good idea. Now while we're talking about insulation, there is another option instead of using a sleeping bag. You can get um, a top quilt, which is designed specifically for hammock camping. Um, and basically, you know, that's forming your top half of your insulation. So that in conjunction with an under blank, with a, an under quilt, um, you know, you've got the bottom half of your sleeping bag, if you like, and the top half of your sleeping bag. So there you go, that's your basic hammock camping kit and the setup that I like to use. Hammock, tarp, under blanket, and top quilt or sleeping bag. Okay, what about sleeping on the ground? So you're also gonna need something to cover you. So you're gonna need a tarp. Uh, this is also a three by three tarp. Um, in fact, identical to the other one, apart from in color. Um, so a three by three tarp, um, which obviously you can set up in any number of different configurations depending on um, where you find yourself and, and, and what you need in terms of shelter. You're going to need something to sleep on. Now obviously there are options. Um, you could use one of these foam sleeping mats. Um, you know, these are, these are inexpensive. They're indestructible because, you know, there's nothing to puncture. Um, they're a bit on the thin side, but they're, they're, not, they're not too bad, yeah? And they, they offer you good um, thermal insulation from the ground. So you could use that sort of sleeping pad. You could go down the thermo rest route, and this is just your, your original old school 
Thermarest, uh, a full length one. Um, so that would be a slightly more comfortable option. They're thicker, um, but you do have the issue of the possibility of a puncture. Um, and you know, a punctured Thermarest is not a comfortable thing to sleep on. Or you could go down the more modern Thermarest route um, and get one of the, one of the newer style um, Neo Air um, mattresses, like this one here, which is obviously a lot smaller, um, a lot lighter, um, but you still have that issue of punctures. You're gonna need something to insulate you from the cold air, so you're gonna need a sleeping bag or a blanket or something. And when I'm sleeping on the ground, especially in winter, um, I like to use a bivy bag, and my sleeping bag just goes in the bivy bag and gives me another level of um, protection from the damp. And the last thing, although not always essential, depending on how you set your tarp up, um, is some sort of uh, ground sheet. I have a, a very light um, plastic ground sheet here. Um, doesn't take up, up hardly any room at all in my pack, um, and I usually take that with me if I'm camping on the ground. So there you go, that's my typical ground dwelling setup. My tarp, my sleeping pad, a bivy bag, a ground sheet and a sleeping bag. This one here is a summer sleeping bag, so obviously you can swap that out. Um, and in the winter, I would use a thicker, warmer sleeping bag. And that would be the only difference. The rest of it would just stay the same. So there you go. There's not a lot of difference in volume between the ground dwelling setup and my hammock setup. The hammock setup might be slightly bulkier, but it's, it's not a lot in it really. Okay, I'm gonna get the hammock set up and I'm gonna set up a typical tarp setup that I might use and we'll have a look at the, the differences and the advantages of each. This is the way I set my hammock up um, and uh, you know it's it's really comfortable and that really is uh, is the advantage for me. Um, I don't tend to do a lot of hammock camping in the winter I prefer to hammock camp in the summer um, the reason being that I have this uh, insect bug net um, which I can zip up to keep the bugs at bay I'm up off the ground I get a little bit more breeze it's a little bit cooler um, and yeah, it's just, it's just a bit more comfortable. Um, the, the wind, and in particular, being chilled by the wind isn't such an issue in summer. Um, so I can afford to have the, the tarp set up as it is now on quite a shallow, with quite a shallow pitch. It's enough to shed uh, light rain off. Um, but you know, that could be, that could be adjusted. Um, if I knew there was gonna be heavy rain, I could, I could bring the sides down uh, at a steeper angle to shed rain. Um, and of course you can also set the tarp up in a diagonal format, um, having uh, the corners um, strung out to, to trees uh, and it sort of forms a kind of diamond. Um, I actually prefer it this way, but you know, there, there, are, there are options. But uh, yeah, the real, the real advantage of course of the hammock though is it is just so comfortable. Yeah, always sleep well in my hammock. Uh, 
So in the winter, I prefer to sleep on the ground. Um, I find it warmer. Um, you know, I've got a I've got a really good um, sleeping pad, um, and uh, and this thing's this thing's really warm. Um, I don't get any problems with uh, with cold coming up through the ground. Um, or if I'm if I'm canoeing, I'll often use my foam uh, kneeling pad, which is an inch thick. Again, comfortable and warm. Um, either way. I do find it more comfortable on the ground in winter. You can hunker down a bit more. Um, the tarp offers so many different options of how you can set it up to offer you um, really good protection from the elements. Um, you know, it's not only the, the rain, but also the wind. You want to keep that wind off you, that cold wind, because that's just going to chill you. Um, so it's really important you think about how to set it up um, and uh, which way the prevailing wind is. Um, but you know the other nice thing about uh, about a setup like this is you can be all nice and comfortable here You've got the back of the tarp, which is essentially forming a Reflector so if you have a fire built in front of you here, you're going to get the benefit of that fire It's going to come into the shelter. It's going to warm you It's going to reflect off the back of the tarp and it's going to give you um, an extra bit of warmth You'll have to forgive the way I've set the tarp up today. Um, it wasn't my intention to set it up quite how it is um, But it works. It works pretty well but um, the truth is I forgot my paracord <laughs> and, um, and I just had a few short lengths um, on the tarp uh, left over from a, a canoe trip I did recently where I had it set up as a tarp tent and I only needed kind of short lengths to, to set it up that way. Um, so I didn't quite have enough to run the corners to where I wanted to, to run them. So I've had to kind of, you know, tie it off the other tarp and, and, and sort of thinner twigs and things of, of, off trees that, you know, I wouldn't normally tie to. Um, just because they wouldn't they wouldn't stand up to it in um, in the wind But there are loads of different ways you can set your tarp up um, You know a lean-to like this is great um, it, it offers you good protection. It's open at the front. So you have good visibility um, But also you can have a fire in the winter It's important uh, to give you some extra heat and to heat to, to warm you you can set it up as a tarp tent um, And I do that quite a lot. I often uh, use a tarp tent on on canoe trips um, and uh, that set up like that you're really enclosed you know you're 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 enclosed pretty much all the way around with a small small gap where the door is um, but uh, yeah that's that's a good that's a good way to set things up so it's very versatile but one of the main advantages for me um, in sleeping on the ground as opposed to in a hammock um, is that you're not restricted by having to have trees uh, and trees that are a certain distance apart in order for you to be able to hang your hammock up um, you know you can set yourself up a shelter with a tarp with no trees at all um, you know, like, as I said, I mentioned I mentioned tarp tents, you know, you can use walking poles, you can use canoe paddles Or if you can find a stick or cut yourself a pole uh, You know, you've got a you've got a pole in order to set your to set your tarp up Obviously if you're hammock camping you need to have two things that are rigid that you can uh, tie your hammock between You know without those you're you're in a pickle <laughs> So yeah, I'll also camp on the ground if I'm unsure of um, whether or not there's going to be woodland So there you have it. For me, I like to hammock camp in the summer months. I find it cooler. I like the bug net to keep the insects away from me. Um, and I just find hammocks extremely comfortable. There's nothing quite like uh, swinging in your hammock on a hot day in the breeze. The kit you need is a little bit bulkier than if you're camping on the ground. Um, but you know, you need to decide whether it's worth taking the uh, you know the extra bits of kit with you um, my hammock is quite big um, you know you can get much smaller hammocks uh, so you could you could certainly reduce the size of your um, of your hammock setup uh, by using smaller lighter weight stuff the downsides for me um, is that it takes a little bit longer to set up than than just a tarp but the main thing is that you're restricted as to where you can set up you've got to have two trees or two things that you can tie your hammock too that are spaced the correct distance apart you know without that you, you can't well you just can't hang your hammock up in the winter I prefer to camp on the ground um, as I said earlier I find it warmer um, and cozier I find it's a bit more 
a bit more closed in, uh, you can get the wind off you, you can get the weather off you. It's also much more versatile, there are so many different ways that you can set your tarp up uh, according to where you find yourself and what the conditions are. You need less gear and it's lighter. So those are my thoughts anyway. I like both, but there are people that prefer to hammock and there are people that prefer to sleep on the ground. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful. Uh, just before I sign off, I just wanted to let you all know I am now on Instagram. Thanks to my daughter Beth, she's, uh, she's helped me set up and, um, and has been showing me what to do really, because I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to technology. Uh, but uh, yeah, please come along and, uh, and have a little look at my Instagram, that would be fantastic. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.